Here we have a Sir Corso, and from the looks of it, with the uh, bent plywood shell, I should really be doing this in my living room on the Noguchi coffee table next to the Eames compact sofa, don't you know? Maybe invite Don Draper over for some drinks. But uh, as I'm a tech, not a cocktail host, I think we'll just do it here on the bench. The owner says that it has uh, humming, the volume fluctuates after it warms up, and the tone, tone is sometimes fuzzy. Well, let's open it up and see what's up with all that, and we'll see if it has some issues common to all lunchbox-style amps. The side screws are nice machine screws. Seems to be a 532nd Allen. Wasn't sure if it was gonna be that or a four millimeter, but the 532nd seems to fit precisely. Uh, a lot of uh, amps, lunchbox amps. I'm sorry, I'm still on my first cup of coffee, so. I may say stupid things from time to time. A lot of lunchbox amps uh, in a similar price range, got some condensation from coming out of the cold car, by the way, um, use small, small uh, machine screws, like a number four machine screw, and they often strip. I don't think that's gonna be the case with these big boys, so that's nice. A lot of lunchbox amps, you have to take the entire top cover off to access the tubes. On this one, you can access the tubes just by removing this rear mesh panel. You don't have to take the whole thing apart, so that's nice. Let's see, how difficult is it to slide this off? Something rattled when I did that. So, uh, maybe this needs to come off before this comes off. I am not sure, so let me futz around off camera. Well, I'm not entirely sure how to get this metal chassis out of this wood case. Um, the rear is loose, but the front is not, and the front goes through these little, the front panel slides into these little recesses. It may just be friction, but I don't want to damage anything. So if I need to remove this for any reason, I may call uh, the Sear company once they open in a little while. They're in California, I'm in Memphis. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna finish removing this last screw. I'll pick it up in just a second. I'm just gonna take this bottom panel off. Before we go any farther, I wanna point out that I, I suspect that the issue is likely just tubes. But if I had just changed out a tube and sent this on its way and not shown you guys the inside, there would have been riots, riots, I tell you. So let's take a look at the insides. All very straightforward, good quality PCBs, done like a lot of SIRs. Um, very nice components, used well. Honk an 8 ohm, 15 watt rheostat or something there. That's for the power scaling or whatever he calls it. I don't remember what the SIR name is. And that's probably fine. Hopefully that's, that circuitry there is proprietary. I'm sure if necessary, John let me have the secret sauce to do a, a repair, but it's probably not gonna be necessary. Uh, we'll revisit this if anything is at fault within the app, but it's good quality stuff and the uh, everything has a, rec a receiver bolt or or PEM nut in the chassis. Very nice quality stuff. I believe he has the stuff milled, uh, which is uh, kind of insane quality. Nice if you can get it. While the inside of the amp does not have all the common everything squeezed together, fitting way too many things in, then will really fit that you find in a lot of lunchbox amps. Like all lunchboxes and all heads for that matter, it is prone to gathering dust. I'll get more out in a little while. What are these output tubes here? 12BH7A, so this is a very low wattage amp, okay. You get all the dust off, because with the dust on, they look like they might not have getters anymore. The one thing I will say is kind of a downer from a tube changing perspective is to access the preamp tubes. You need to pretty much remove the power tubes. And those will typically run a little bit hot. So if I need to swap out V1 or V2 to troubleshoot this, there's gonna be a little bit of a wait uh, before I can pull the output tubes sometimes. And uh, if you have big hands like me, that's not fun. But uh, I'm looking at the uh, 12BH7As. I don't see any, see any problems with it. 
there are oftentimes problems which have no visual clue, but it's nice when I can say, oh, that, one, that one's got an obvious problem. I can skip a lot of testing. That's not the case here. So let me hook up a cabinet and a power cable, and we shall see what we shall see. Well, as you can hear, there's a lot of hum when we power it off. First thing I did was made sure it had the correct one-amp fuse. Let me tap on tubes to any of them are obvious noisemakers. Interestingly, the hum is less the second time I powered it on than the first. And there it fades. Volume fluctuates after it warms up. And now that hum is totally gone. That's always fun. So on the, I'm going to pull the first two preamp tubes and let it cool off completely. I want to check the output section before anything else. Here's something that's hard to quant quantify, but this output tube, which was here, feels warmer than this one. Not by a lot. And I remove them at different times, so it's not necessarily all that meaningful. I'll have to revisit that. All right, so I'm going to wait about 10 minutes, let this cool off completely, and try that hum start again. All right, so I've got the 12x7 phase inverter and the two 12BH7A output tubes in place. The amp is on. There's no hum. I'm adding the V2 7027 12x7, which is cold. As that warms up, we're going to listen for that hum. Now we're going to add the 12AU7 V1 tube. And yes, I verify that the 12AU7 is in fact the V1 tube for this amp. It's a bit unusual. And now I don't have that monster hum. That's frustrating. Well, I'm going to let it run for a bit and uh, see if any noise comes back or if it changes. And then we'll, if it seems okay after five, ten minutes. I'll come back to it with a guitar, we'll, we'll resume. Um, I'm going to be doing some other stuff behind me on the desk while this sits here. I'm not just sitting here watching it out for 10, 15 minutes, but it'll be behind me as I work on, on the laptop, and I'll hear it if the noise starts to change. Well, frustratingly, the amp has been on now for about 40 minutes, and uh, is not making that awful hum anymore. I'm going to have to let this power off for like more than an hour and retry. But in the meantime, let's see if we can get any misbehavior out of it. It's possible that there was just dust in a socket and removing and cleaning the tubes and putting them back and blowing things out took care of it. I have poked and prodded on all the wires and connections on the board, all the components. Everything seems to be absolutely rock solid. The uh, noise, the rattle that I had when I moved the cabinet Behind the four little screws and their washers that secure the metal grill to the rear are four more washers, two of which were loose inside the amp. So I'm going to remove that panel in the past and put it back incorrectly. So that, that's what the rattle was. Anyway, let's see what this sounds like. I'll probably have to turn the uh, power down so we don't clip the mic free here. But...
that sucks. If I didn't know any better, I'd say this is not only a completely healthy amp, but a really good sounding one. Let me refresh the, my memory on the complaints. Humming, we had the humming, but um, the humming went away and has not returned. Volume fluctuates after it warms up and tone sometimes fuzzy. I have not had the last two symptoms. So I'm debating whether to power this off for an hour or two and then restart cold and see if we get that hum or whether to keep on pushing and maybe play something with a loop running this into a dummy load and I can monitor at lower volume levels just to see if it starts to mess up after things get hot. But it's been on for like 40 minutes now. The 12AU7 is just the slightest bit microphonic. If you tap on it, you can hear it, but it's not a ping. It's just a, a slight thump, uh, thud. It's nothing major. The other tubes seem just fine. Sometimes it's worse when it's the problem isn't obvious, when it's not a big problem. I think I'm going to let this run and stay hot for a while, playing on a loop until I can get it to replicate maybe the uh, volume fluctuating or the sound getting fuzzy. But again, all those things including the humming that we had at the beginning, could be explained by a dirty contact with a tube. Like if one of the 12BH7s had a dirty contact on one of its pins, and just the act of taking it out, getting the dust blown out, and putting it back, fix that. Because that's an electrical connection from pin to the socket, and any bit of dirt can prevent that from being reliable, and as heat builds up, it can change. So there may not be anything wrong with the app at this point, but I have to do my due diligence to ensure that. Fun. Okay. I changed out the 12AU7 because the one that was in there, the ARS, got really microphonic after the app had been on about 20 minutes. It started off really minor microphonics. It got worse as it got hot. And I pulled this 12BH7 to be able to reach it. And when I put it all back together and power it back on, I had a hum, let's see if we still have the hum, because I had pulled this tube, so this tube cooled more quickly than this tube did. There's that hum, and I think it's gonna dissipate as these start to draw the same amount of current. Hmm. Look how red that one's getting. I think we got a bad 12A. All right, so we had a microphonic 12AU6 and a bad 12BH7 that wasn't always, always acting up, but now it is. But that red plate, I don't trust them. So about to call the owner, let them know. Needs a, a less microphonic 12AU and two 12BH7s, and those are not terribly expensive, so I'm glad to have found this. Just for fun though, let me swap these and see if the problem follows the tube, not the socket. I'm pretty sure it will, but it's always good to be sure of these things. All right, let's see if the red plating stays with the tube or the socket. There's that awful noise we had the first time I've hired the amp on. It's interesting that it's intermittent. But there, there's the cherry plating on this one, so it's the tube, definitely, not the socket. That means there's not a problem with the amplifier. That's good. Three tubes with no soldering or anything is a much lower uh, bill than three tubes plus any work on the amp itself. So I'm going to put three new tubes in this, and then we'll do a, a test at that point. And I think I'll just do it all in one video because there's just not a lot to it other than that, and uh, it's a really good sounding amp. Okay, so we've got a new Mullard Reissue 12AU7 in V1, non-microphonic. Two new Tube Amp Doctor 12BH7A output tubes, and everything seems to be just great. I'm gonna let it run for about another hour just to make sure, but uh, I don't expect to find any problems with it, and it's a really nice sounding versatile amp. Mm -hmm. 